Lowry. I'm here with a colleague of mine, Rob Mitchell, out the back. We have a company called the Action Sports Agency, and we're a business development firm uh, who secretly do the back office work for a lot of initiatives in the action sports industry, of which what we pulls is our, um, hopefully, legacy project. Uh, we've been working with Greg for five or six years now. We all live in Sydney. Uh, we flew in for the weekend, well, for the week at the conference, but um, Greg, unfortunately, couldn't make it. Today, he's got a bad back and he couldn't fly out with us, so he sent myself and Rob Mitchell, who you'll see after that, to uh, give you a quick introduction on what we've been working on. Uh, I know there's a lot of speculation out there in the market field about what Weber Waypool is about and what it's creating and the model state of the market. So, um, based on, I mean, well, in, in relation to our um, commercial initiatives, we're kind of under strict confidentiality agreements. So not too much to be disclosed at the moment. Um, and yes, we have not built one yet, which I'll explain why shortly. But uh, I think it's not a good opportunity to just give you an introduction on what Weber White Pools is um, and how we're commercially doing it. <coughs> So to um, start off, I think everybody's perhaps been familiar with this image before. Endless wave, that's what the most poetic, I guess, expression for the uh, wave pools that Greg put forward. Uh, first question asked traditionally, how do you make these waves? How Greg makes these waves? So um, as you all may be familiar, the Weber wave pools model is driven around Kelvin wakes, of which are surface wakes, of which are the same wakes that are made when a boat passes through water. So the natural phenomenon exists. And as you drive a boat closer to the shoreline, just like at the beach, the wave breaks because it kills, it kills the wave energy. So we have spent tremendous time, effort, a lot of cash um, recreating this natural phenomenon and protecting it, protecting the assets. So we have patents, low patent, international patents around this particular phenomenon that happens naturally. That's our focus. It's not the shape of the pool, it's not the direction the wave's going, it's all about natural phenomenon that happens when you drive a dozer through a plane of water, that displacement. So what we've done, um, we've recreated this phenomenon um, through a lot of research and development, and we've created a dozer, a hull, which is thing on the left side. And just like the ocean, just like the beach, the wave breaks when it hits shallow water. So this dozer, which is large to create, well, it's scalable, at least the size of the pool you're going to make, the size of the waves you're going to make. Um, it's what drives the water, displaces the water, creates a wave off the back of it, just like a boat. Just like a boat. So, as you can see from perspective, uh, those are drives the water, surface surface behind it. What we could do, poetically, um, and proven our research and development labs, is make it go a circle, go perpetuity, forever, 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 go left, right, back and forth, uh, scale it up, scale it down, make it bigger, <coughs> make, the, make the pool bigger. Uh, the bigger the pool, naturally, the more holes you can introduce the pool, which will naturally allow you to increase wave rate, which I'll step to next. Um, however, as you can imagine, this is a really, really big development. Big circle pool takes a lot of property, requires a lot of capital, so uh, the idea was to cut it, cut it in half and make a smaller pool. Same methodology, same approach, um, same science, so um, we've just simply chop a circle pool in half and recreate the, phenomenon, recreate, recreate the phenomenon. Um, you've seen a couple of these images I think floating around. It's uh, Future Surf Park and then Surfing at Night. But again, these pools are quite large. So we've been quietly um, back in the lab testing over and over and over um, to requalify our approach our methodology, and it's led us to create this design called the loop linear pool. It takes into account the exact same methodology and approach that we created the circular pool concepts with, and the crescent pools, which are the half circle pools. Um, and I'll quickly show you the animation. Matt, can you play the animation? We'll show you a quick animation on how this particular model functions. Yeah, so again, um, it's a simple process. Um, it's a dozer driving through a plane of water that creates a natural displacement off the back. And the faster you drive the hull, the deeper you drive the hull, the bigger the wave. Uh, so now it's, 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 it's a law of physics. 
Um, slow it down, you can control it. However, um, we've been fortunate enough, and that's a term we use candidly, we've been fortunate enough to uh, secure patents around this phenomenon. And now we're developing these pools commercially um, around the planet. But what this animation sort of simulates is the model itself, its functionality, um, our ability to control the waves. There's a lot of videos and uh, sort of footage on the internet that you all have probably seen. Uh, I'll give you an indication of what's possible. But again, this is just a quick animation to show you how the pool will work and function, only because we have not built a full scale pool yet. We've built a scale pool down in Tasmania, where our research arm is at the University of Tasmania in Launceston. Uh, but we're yet to build a full scale pool only because we are unfortunate we haven't been able to secure development group yet. So we have projects around the planet and we're waiting for DA to be approved so we can start construction. Um, but until that time, and we continue to battle environmental impact, of course you can imagine we're building a big property and digging a deep hole, um, we're having to uh, consult and workshop with local councils. So these are screen grabs from the video you just watched. Um, as per the full circle hall, I mean the full, the full circle pool, this is the drive system that's associated with the loop linear pool. Uh, again, same approach, same methodology, same technology. Um, this is probably reminiscent of a chairless system, you can imagine. So the longer the pool, the more holes you can stack in the pool. It's a calculated equation that uh, justifies how far apart each hole has to be. So you can determine how many waves you can create in your pool because each hole equals a wave. I'll explain why the loop linear pool only creates one wave per hole as opposed to the circular pool that you saw that on the images on the walls, there's two waves behind, behind each hole. Uh, and that's dedicated solely to a, a scientific phenomenon called radial compression, but that's the detail. At the same time, the loop linear pool can be chopped in half to make it smaller which is this single channel linear pool. we plan view and naturally take a small footprint and as you'll see, similar draw system. This is what we've been doing for the past six years. Um, refining the technology, um, recreating it over and over to ensure that we can take it up to scale and uh, most importantly, dedicating a lot of time to protecting the IP. So, the key value propositions around the wave pool is wave quality. Uh, I know there's been a lot of discussion around wave quality. I believe there was an article posted on Surf Summit by uh, Peter, Peter Del Cotto, um, the other day. So there's a discussion on wave quality. Um, wave control, again, just like a boat, you can slow it down, speed it up, drive it deeper, and um, make a bigger wave, smaller wave um, in relation. Wave rate. Well, from an economic perspective, it's a critical consideration. Because um, it's all about throughput, it's all about having a happy surface. The more surface at your park, you want to be able to fill them. If you're waiting on long lines and your feet are burning, waiting on concrete, it's not a good day. So um, the ability to increase your wave rate is fundamental to what I believe, we believe wholeheartedly uh, the viability of the surf park. More waves, more people, happy surface. Um, and then in relation, the length of ride relative to the length of pool and your wave rate correlation. So, um, the, as I mentioned, the longer the pool, the more holes you can stack in the pool, therefore, the more waves you can create. There's a couple models on the market uh, that I believe their ability to create waves is inversely proportionate to the length of the pool by meaning that if they go from point A to point B, the longer the pool, the longer it'll take to get from point A to point B. If you only have one device that's able to create the wave, it'll decrease your wave rate. That makes sense. So, like the chairless system, because we can attach more holes based on a calculable distance, the longer the pool, the more holes we can introduce in that pool. Therefore, the more waves we can create. And then, um, fundamentally, the strength, the strength of the IP. We can't protect the asset. It's not worth commercializing it. So. Um, our stakeholders have been very, 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 very diligent in uh, securing international patents. 
so we can commercialize the web wave pool. In regards to commercializing the web wave pool, we have two commercial assets that we're taking to market. Um, smaller, more pro, or more, more accessible product is going to be the smart part, the smaller footprint. And then we plan to have a select few bigger, all-encompassing action sport precincts called the compound. So I'll quickly introduce you to the smart part and the compound, which will just be a quick, high-level image intoxication. I won't speak too long about it, but I think the imagery will speak for itself. So the smart part, um, it's driven around a headquarters, a skate plaza, retail hospitality accommodation. So you can imagine a precinct like this in a community that has a healthy enough socioeconomic position as well as a population density that could um, support an action sports precinct like this. A uh, bit of personality on what Smart Park could become. I'll just do a quick slideshow of a couple images. Facilities. No serving. People are up. No skate. It's ripping. Headquarters. So you can have skate school and third school. Kids learning to Retail. Hospitality. Beach scene. Well-being and health. High performance facilities. Accommodation. So trust you can imagine yourself at a smart park. So a quick day at a smart park. Check in. Learn to surf. We get surf lessons. Go surf and go skate. Take a break. Eat lunch. Do it again. Last session before the sun goes down. Have a few drinks. Pay your bill. <laughs> <laughs> That's the day of the smart part. I mean, you have this place called the Compound, which is this destination resort. We've been planning this with a handful of developers around the planet. Um, managing this brand and, and managing expectations and experience around not only the compound, but the smart park as well. But uh, we have to be strategic about where we place these things called compound. But what you will find out of compound is pretty comprehensive, um, all-encompassing action sports precinct. But as you can imagine, the big property demand, um, environmental impacts are pretty gnarly. Um, capital requirements are up there. So creating financial solutions uh, and amortization schedules to responsibly implement one of these developments and destination resorts around the planet has been quite, <coughs> not challenging, but um, strategic, I suppose. Um, but rest assured, things are moving forward. So a quick snapshot of what a compound may look like. So the culture. Have you get the idea? Is everything you dream about? I wish I could tell you more, but we can't right now, unfortunately, uh, under confidentiality agreements. So again, you've seen a day at the smart park, so you can imagine a week at the compound. So naturally, we get a lot of questions about the way pool, uh, what it's all about. This is a frequently asked question that I'm sure you can't read in the back. Uh, it's about how big the wave is, how many waves per hour. Again, wave rates, critical, uh, we believe, in building a sustainable uh, Wave pool precinct. So this pool, particularly, it's 160 meters by by 70 meters. I guess about three acres, a little over three acres in size, um, creating a 1.5 meter high wave, shoulder high, overhead, um, costing for this pool alone, not including land and conditional on the land and the site, just under 11 million. We've been quoted less, but again, we haven't built one yet, so we want to advantage expectations. So we're going to double it or close to it. 
Um, but this is the loop linear model. Uh, this is the shape. This is not you've seen in all the parks so far. Um, again, we haven't built one yet, but we work with well-qualified engineers and universities who are willing to put their name, brand, reputation on the line to back our initiative. So um, there's a lot of R&D behind the campaign that, that, that can be readily made available to you. Um, find a lot of information on the website. However, for a personal, we're here, Rob and I will be able to answer as many questions as we can and or email us at information, info at webwaypools.com and we can provide everything from general information memorandums through to due diligence packages. Um, opportunities to license the brands, the smart part of the compound, it's all up for discussion. So um, that's a quick snapshot into where Weber Way Pools is. Any quick questions? Yes, sir. I just want to say that your presentation has been the best that we've all seen so far. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>